Hey folks, Wish SE. I wanted to talk today about what I consider one of the top combat pistols really in the last uh, 50 years. And that would be the Glock 17. I have three different models here that I'm going to just show you briefly and tell you a little bit about why I like the Glock so much. I have a Gen 2 version, this Gen 2 version, this G17. Gen 2 is from the late 80s. Of course, you'll note with the Gen 2s, there, there's nothing on the front here to attach a light. It does not have the finger grooves. Um, and yet, to me, this is one of the most comfortable of all the Glock pistols. And many people who have shot Glocks a lot, a lot um, really do have a preference for the different generations, depending on what it is. But this one has been uh, used, I've shot tens of thousands of rounds through it. It was a police trade and um, it was and has been well used and really is fantastic and one of the reasons that I really like the Glock platforms is their simplicity, ease of use and the fact that you can teach pretty much any new shooter the manual of arms with this firearm in a safe way and make them proficient in a relatively short amount of time. So again, this Gen 2 version is from the late 80s and has, uh, I've owned it I think since 91, so it's been around a while. I've shot it a lot, used it in competition, used it as a range gun, uh, and just had a tremendous amount of uh, teaching with it as well as a lot of training. The next gun here is the Gen 3 version. And again, the Gen 3 was sort of the next iteration. So some of the changes you'll see on Gen 3 pistols is the fact that you now have the area up here which will allow you to attach a light. You'll also note the finger grooves along the front of the frame. And uh, this is another pistol that I have just put you know, tens of thousands of, of rounds through. Um, spent more money on the ammunition for the gun than the gun uh, itself is worth. Uh, it has been absolutely tremendous, 100% reliable. And where you really notice this is if you're taking a class and you're shooting five, six, seven hundred rounds um, in the course of a day without cleaning or lubricating a gun. What you'll see is striker-fired guns, by and large, are much more willing to put up with that abuse than some of the other designs out there. Again, I'm not knocking any designs. As any of you know from watching my videos, I am agnostic as it comes to firearms. Uh, what I do want is 100% reliability in a package that I can maintain, me, you know, without great skills, I can maintain, and one that is going to allow me as an instructor to demonstrate and show students how to do certain things. So again, the Glock Gen 3, this one, like the Gen 2, tens of thousands of rounds through it, just absolutely fantastic. At the 2012 uh, SHOT Show, Glock introduced their Gen 4 version, and Glock made some slight modifications to the frame, a uh, little bit narrower. They started using the du du dual capture recoil spring um, on it, and they changed the design of it ever so slightly in terms of how um, the grip feels in your hand. It's just a tad narrower. The uh, mag release button, go ahead and just verify this unloaded. Yep. The magazine release button you'll note right here is um, more flush and certainly works very well. It also can be swapped out so you can run it from the other side making the pistol um, effective for lefties. I have found uh, great success in using this pistol as well. It's relatively new to the collection but again it's one that has really performed well for me. I made a couple modifications to this Gen 4 version. We've got the uh, Vogel uh, competition trigger installed in it. We have the Tritium Trigicon suppressor sights allowing a co-witness with the Trigicon RMR red dot optic. We've also added the Grip Force beaver tail here. Again, the new Gen 4 Glocks actually come with uh, different back straps. Uh, I just happen to prefer this one better based on its shape and its size. So all three of these guns shoot the 
uh, 9mm Luger pistol uh, cartridge, 9 by 19 and it's one that is, uh, in my mind, uh, affordable, easy to shoot, and uh, also if you're using it for defensive type applications, there are a number of different loadings that you know, work very well and, and are certainly effective from a self-defense standpoint. So what I wanted to just show you was that you've got three generations here of, of Glock 17s. All of them are uh, pistols that I believe would serve anyone well. They certainly served me well for, for the use. I tend to shoot a lot of rounds through my pistols and as such, um, you know, a pistol that perhaps isn't well designed will fail because I just shoot it so much um, that it's going to, you know, break in or break depending on, on what the case may be. So each one of these guns sort of has uh, pros and cons to it. I really happen to personally like the Gen 2 frame just because it fits my hand a little better uh, than anything else. It just feels better to me. However, the Gen 4 version with its slightly narrower grip, and it's you know minuscule, maybe a millimeter or something, and with the addition of the grip force ad adapter here on the rear, does make this gun more pointable in terms of just straight out to point, um, and it does feel a little bit better in the hand. The bottom line is, as it relates to any kind of handgun, is you want to find one that fits your hand, so that feels good to you, that you feel confident with, and that you know from a performance standpoint is going to be 100% reliable. For many of you who have been watching my videos, you also know I'm a huge fan of the M&P line, and that's simply because those fit my hands a little bit better. I do own several Glocks. Um, this is simply the three uh, G17s that I own, um, but I own a lot of other ones, and I really think they're a top performer, and certainly one, if I could only have one uh, auto-loading pistol, I would be hard-pressed not, not to choose the Glock 17 or the Glock 19. That being said, whatever works for you, because at the end of the day, it's your ability to be able to run the gun under stress with proficiency, do all of that safely, is really what matters. So anyway, that's a quick look at three of the Glock 17 generations and a um, little bit of discussion on why I like them as much as I do. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Over the next several weeks, we'll be um, getting out and doing some slightly different videos, including some interviews with some people that I feel uh, deserve a bit of recognition, picking their brains a little bit about um, things that are going on in the world, some of their life experiences. One of them coming up is a highly decorated uh, combat uh, vet and uh, fellow instructor, someone I've been able to work with, uh, who's, who's worked with on target training, uh, and we'll be interviewing him, sharing some of his experiences, as well as telling you a little bit about his own organization, Interactive Gunfighting. So I look forward to uh, sharing that with you. I have had some surgery on my elbow, and as a result, will not be doing much firearm shooting with my dominant hand with my right hand. Uh, we might be doing some shooting with our left hand, my um, non-dominant hand. But anyway, primarily we'll be uh, looking at uh, gear uh, and equipment over the next couple months. Hey, certainly appreciate all of you watching. Uh, it means a great deal to me. We've had great growth in the channel, and it's all because of you. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe.